Hey guys, so today's video is going to be another in my best and worst series and today the brand that I'm going to be talking about is Hourglass. I feel like Hourglass have become so popular over the past like three years, especially in the UK because you didn't used to be able to find them in many places. But I feel like a lot of their products now are massively hyped up, but they're also super, super expensive. So I wanted to make this video um, and talk to you guys about the brand, but also what I love from the brand and what I think is worth the money. And then also some products that I don't think are worth the money. And it's worth noting with this brand in particular, there are very, very few products that I would say I don't like. Generally, most products from Hourglass are absolutely gorgeous, beautiful products. However, they do come with a massive price tag. So the difference for me here is really good and worth the money or really good but not worth the money. And then there are two products at the end that I don't think are very good and I haven't really gotten on with them very well. But um, as always with these kind of videos, everybody has different skin. Um, everybody has kind of different preferences of what they like and textures and finishes and things like that. So it might not be the case for you, um, but this is just my general experience with the brand. And I have a list written down as well because Hourglass is the kind of brand that if I run out of something, I don't automatically go and repurchase it because most of their products are kind of 40, 50 pounds upwards. So um, they're a very pricey brand. So a lot of the things I have tried in the past and I've loved and I haven't repurchased because I haven't wanted to kind of spend that money again and I don't necessarily feel like I need it because um, obviously have I have a lot of makeup being a beauty blogger. So um, yeah, if I say I really like something but I don't have it, it doesn't mean that I'm not kind of being truthful. It's just I haven't repurchased it at this time, if you get what I mean. So starting off with the most obvious place to start with Hourglass and that is with their powders. And this is an example of their powders. This is one of their limited edition palettes that I don't think you can get currently. This is called the Ambient Lighting Edit palette, um, which I believe was potentially 2015. A lot of these powders as well are quite old because um, I don't necessarily throw powders away that often because they don't kind of, they're not wet kind of products that breed bacteria too much. So if you kind of make, keep them clean, um, they last a bit longer. Anyway, so the one thing I would say with Hourglass powders is that they are 100% worth the money. They are brilliant. They're so finely, milled and they just apply beautifully, they blend beautifully and the colour payoff is brilliant in terms of like the bronzers and the blushes, obviously the actual powders themselves are more like kind of highlighters and that's what I actually really like with the powders in the Hourglass range is that they are, a lot of them are not quite powders, not quite highlighters, they're like really kind of luminising face powders. So depending on the level of highlight or glow that you want, you can choose different ones. So um, some of them can be used as all over face powders and then others are more like highlighters. In general, all of their powders are beautiful, but there are a few kind of hit and misses in terms of what I would suggest. First of all, the blushes are gorgeous and there are two blushes like in this palette, as you can see there. These are Mood Exposure and Luminous Flush and this one in particular, which is Mood Exposure, is one of my favorite shades and that's the one. I actually did have a full size of this and I dropped it when I was getting all of the products ready to film this video and it smashed on the floor and I was very upset, but I still have the mini version, so um, that is fine. And then the other one that I would say I absolutely love is the Euphoric Fusion, which is the newer, or a newer shade instruction. You can tell I kind of like plummy, mauvey shades for my blushes, but I would say the Hourglass blushes are up there with some of the, ble the best blushes on the market and I 100% would recommend them. The other thing I really, really would recommend from the brand are the bronzers. I genuinely think these bronzers are the best bronzers I've ever used. I absolutely love them. This one is Radiant Bronze Light, but I also have a couple of other colors um, in my makeup bag. And I just, they are so, so nice. They blend amazingly well. They're very kind of seamless and they just add a really beautiful glow as well because they have that um, kind of ambient lighting powder like run through them. So they have that same kind of it's not a shimmer, it's almost just like gorgeous, gorgeous glow. The other thing I really would recommend getting are the Trio palettes. And you can actually get these either as um, powder, I think you can buy the powder one currently, which looks like this, um, or you can get them as kind of DIY custom palettes and pick your own shades. And the reason why I would recommend these is because they end up being better value for money because you get three shades 
um, for, it's around the price of two. So um, it is better value in terms of what shades you get. And it's also, even though you're not getting as much of each color, they last such a long time. Like I've used all of these palettes so much and you barely make a dent in the powder because they're just, yeah, they last such a long time. So I definitely would recommend the trios. The one thing I would say with the powders that I've been disappointed by, and I don't think they're necessarily worth the money, is first of all, this palette, which is the Surreal Light palette. This was limited edition, I think, so it's not really available anymore. This is the one in the um, marble case. But I would say, like, I found this palette a little bit wishy-washy for me, like it's all quite samey. Like these four colors I think are quite samey, and then they obviously have the, like, the brighter blush. But for me, it just wasn't as versatile as the previous um, Ambient Edit, which was this one. I just think for me, I use this a lot more than I use that, even though they, I mean, they look so similar next to each other. But that wasn't my favorite. And the other thing that I didn't particularly like were the strobe, um, the strobe lighting powders, Ambient Strobe lighting powders. So these are the more like strobe effects, kind of heavy highlighting powders. I personally, preferred um, the originals because these to me, they had almost like, well they have almost like little chunks of glitter in them that I didn't like. Um, and they were not as kind of like fine as the other powders. So that's kind of my intro to the Hourglass powders. And I hope that's helped some of you if you're thinking of investing in one of them, because it is an investment. They are pricey, but they are really, really good. They're in definite investment for your makeup bag. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about that I think is worth the money are the foundations. Um, there are two foundations that I love from the brand. The first one is the Illusion Skin Tint, I forgot the name then, which is based on um, like a hyaluronic acid. And don't let the name fool you because the name suggests that it's gonna be a very sheer coverage. It actually has a really decent buildable coverage and the finish is gorgeous. It's very, very kind of light and fresh. It's one of the only foundations that I have bought like off the bat, not knowing or having not knowing anything about it or having tried it before and I've used up the whole thing. Like I absolutely have loved it. I don't have one currently, but I'll pop a picture on screen so you know what it looks like. That stuff is amazing. And if you have kind of normal to dry skin, I would 100% recommend checking that out because it is beautiful. Another foundation that I think is amazing from the brand is the Vanish um, foundation stick. Now these are really heavy coverage. They're like full coverage. So if you don't like full coverage, you're not gonna like these. At the moment, this shade is a little bit too pale for me, so I'm not able to use it. But in the winter, um, it's just really nice. And this is the kind of foundation that I would wear on um, a night out or a special occasion. It really has like, full coverage, but it still leaves you with a really gorgeous, kind of glowing, kind of dewy finish. But it's not greasy looking or like oily looking at all. It's just really, really lovely. And it just blends beautifully into the skin. Love that. There is one foundation that I think is on the actual bad list out of those two products that I think are not good that I've tried from the brand. The Immaculate Foundation, which they've just reformulated, which is the higher coverage, more matte finish foundation. For me, that was just so cakey feeling and looking, it just absolutely didn't work for me and I 100% wouldn't recommend that one. But the other two I love and would 100% recommend. So moving on to lip products, there are two lip products again that I don't currently have in my collection but that I would 100% recommend are the two liquid lipsticks. So there's the Lip Gloss, which is the Extreme Sheen High Shine Lip Gloss. I've got these written down again because there's no way I'm remembering all the names. That stuff is really good. One of my favorite um, lip glosses in terms of it's opaque and it's just really glossy, but it's not sticky. Love that stuff, so lovely. Um, and then the other one are the opaque liquid lipsticks, which are brilliant. Again, I've had a couple of these in the past, but I've used them all up and I don't currently have them in my, have them in my collection, but they are so good and I would 100% recommend those. In terms of the um, girl lipsticks, which um, came out earlier this year. These are on my nice, but potentially not worth the money kind of list because as much as I really like these, the color selection is gorgeous. The payoff and the texture is really nice. Um, they're 25 pounds and I think for me personally to spend 25 pounds on a lipstick, it has to be like the best and I think I would rather spend 16 pound 50 and buy a MAC lipstick because they're my favorite lipsticks and I think um, this is a lot more expensive, 10 pounds more, and I don't like it as much. So um, that's why they're on that list for me. But I know a lot of people absolutely love these, and I do really like them. Um, 
but I wouldn't buy another colour, I don't think, or I wouldn't repurchase it once my ones run out. And then finally on my favourites list from Hourglass is the gel eyeliner pencil. Again, I don't currently have this in my collection. They do these tiny, tiny 1.5 millimetre mechanical pencil gel eyeliners that are brilliant. They come, I think in a pack of three, they are pricey, but they're so good in terms of doing your waterline, they stay on and they're so amazing because that you can really get in between the lashes and do like detailed eyeliner and they're just beautiful. The texture's gorgeous, they're so opaque black as well. They're really good. In terms of the other eye products from the brand, another, well the second product for my actually like I don't really like it list and I probably wouldn't recommend are the eyeshadow palettes which are beautiful and I wanted to like them more than anything else. They're absolutely stunning. But I think for the amount of money that you're paying, um, they just aren't quite up to scratch in comparison to brands like Too Faced and Urban Decay, uh, where you're getting like really gorgeous, and even NARS, when you're getting really, really gorgeous eyeshadows for a fraction of that price in like a bigger palette and more colors. Um, I just think for me, they're not great. Um, even though the packaging is stunning and they look like waves on a beach and they're just gorgeous. Again, I'll insert a picture because I don't currently have one in my collection, but um, those were a disappointment for me. And then in terms of the products that are good, but potentially not worth the money, um, the first one is the mascara. This is the Curator Mascara, which looks incredible and it is really, really brilliant. The one thing I have to say about this is it's so expensive. I just don't think... I could justify um, buying it. Personally, I got given this one from a PR. Um, so the way that this works, and the, one of the reasons why I really like it is it reminds me of a um, Bare Minerals uh, mascara that they had years ago and they discontinued, which is brushless. So the wand itself doesn't have bristles. It has grooves. So it's like a metal instrument, as they call it, and it is um, basically a metal like little stick stem with um, grooves in it. So as you put it on to eyelashes, they go into the grooves and it coats them. The, the formula of the mascara is beautiful. It applies l perfectly. You get really, really great kind of volume and length from it. It is really nice, but the mascara itself, I think is around the 30 pound mark, the 28 pounds, and then the actual um, instrument, I think it's called the instrument, is I think 56 pounds. I'm not entirely sure on the on the exact prices because it's got different prices on different websites, which is really confusing. But all in all, it's a very, very expensive mascara, probably the most expensive if you include both of them, even though you can obviously buy the refill, still it's pricey um, and it is good, but I personally don't know really if it's worth the money. And then last but not least, for the good but not worth the money category is the brow pencil. Um, I like the brow pencil, it's very similar to the Tom Ford one, it's quite a thick um, pencil. Again, I don't currently have it, but I have had it in the past. I liked it, I used it, I think it was probably in my monthly favourites at one point, um, because I had bought it and I really liked it, but in terms of repurchasing it, I think there are better ones on the market that are not quite as expensive. Um, so yeah, for me, I think it's in that category of Really lovely, really great product, but not 100% worth the money. So that's it for my hourglass video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope it's helped you to kind of work out if you're thinking about um, buying some hourglass products and investing in this pretty pricey but really lovely brand. I hope that it's helped you um, kind of work out what you might want to buy. Um, I love this brand and I think I would 100% recommend all of you to save up and buy either a bronzer or a blusher because they are my two favorite products from the brand. 100% absolutely love them and you won't regret buying them, I guarantee it, because they are brilliant. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has helped and I'll see you again very soon. Also, actually, let me know if you have any requests for other brand videos to do best and worst of. Um, I've done Too Faced and Urban Decay and NARS and MAC. I'll link some of those below, but if you want to see any other brands that I haven't done already, then let me know and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.